needs of our community. And now, um, a couple of words of thank you before we, um, before we have a chance to learn from Monsignor Rossi. Um, a note that uh, tonight's sermon and uh, the sermon that I'll be offering at St. Michael down the block and down the, down, the, down the street in a couple of days is being made possible by the Lewis and Joan Lowenstein Foundation, which is part of the Lowenstein Lectures of the Anti-Defamation League, which are designed to promote Catholic Jewish friendship and dialogue. Um, I'm deeply grateful for the work of the ADL, for the presence of ADL professionals and volunteers and leaders who are here tonight, but also whose time and effort, um, generosity and love have made this lecture series possible and uh, enabled us to, to remember at a time um, where interfaith partnership and friendship and commonality is increasingly difficult to come by, um, for us to be reminded that what unites us is much greater than what divides us. Um, a terrific reminder that our friends and our neighbors and our partners in faith um, have so much to teach and so much to learn from one another. And so with gratitude to the ADL and the Lowenstein Lecture Series, it's my pleasure to invite our guest preacher for this evening. You'll see a, a full bio of Monsignor Rossi in your handout. Um, I will let you read that on your own, and so I will just add to those words my own, um, with which I want to share with you my gratitude for his presence and for his new friendship that I, I treasure so deeply as our two congregations draw together and the two of us as clergy people um, who share a, a mission of conscience in our community and in our world. It is, um, I will say, professionally and personally so fulfilling to have started this relationship together and to know that the two of us um, can be together in this pulpit exchange this weekend. Um, a historical note that tonight's sermon and the sermon that I'll offer at St. Michael on Sunday come as Jews and Catholics all over the country and really all over the world recognize 50 years since the Catholic Church issued the document called Nostra Aetate, that, that groundbreaking, very, very important document issued by the Second Vatican Council. That landmark document repudiated anti-Semitism and the charge that Jews were collectively guilty for the crucifixion of Jesus, um, a deeply important historical, ideological, theological, and communal landmark for both of our religious communities. So it is um, with historical gratitude and with deep personal thanksgiving for friendship and partnership that I invite our guest preacher for this evening, Monsignor Frank H. Rossi. Shabbat Shalom. Shortly after my uh, ordination as a priest, now almost 33 years ago, I celebrated Mass in the parish church of an Italian village where my grandparents were baptized as infants and married as young adults before they immigrated to the United States. And that experience gave me a wonderful feeling of being connected to my cultural roots. Well, this evening I have the honor of speaking in this revered synagogue, and I have a wonderful feeling of being connected to my spiritual roots. For if it were not for the Jewish faith, there would be no Christian faith. I'm honored to be with you this evening as we commemorate the 50th anniversary of the Roman Catholic Church's Second Vatican Council document, Nostra Aetate, literally, in our day. The Declaration on the Relation of the Church to Non-Christian Religions. Now, I stand before you this evening not as an expert in Christian-Jewish relations, but as a Catholic priest who firmly believes in Jesus the Nazarene as the Son of God and as one who absolutely loves the Catholic faith. But the more I have grown in knowledge of the richness of the Catholic faith, the more I have come to know, understand, and love the richness of the Jewish faith, from which so much of the Catholic faith is derived. There can be no doubt that most of our common history is filled with alienation and aggression, and this is a mark of shame on the Catholic Church, and one for which recent popes have sought the forgiveness of our 
Jewish brothers and sisters. Much remains to be done in furthering effective dialogue and understanding between the Catholic Church and Judaism, but much has been done in the last 50 years, and that gives us great hope and encouragement. The last three popes have visited the great synagogue of Rome and warmly greeted its chief rabbi. St. Pope John Paul II, 30 years ago. Pope Benedict XVI, seven years ago. And Pope Francis, just two weeks ago. In the Catholic Church, as I believe it is in Judaism, once you have done something three times, it is a tradition. (laughs) So... What a beautiful new tradition the Catholic Church now has, that each pope, soon after his election to the chair of Peter, pays visit to his elder brother in the faith, the chief rabbi of the great synagogue of Rome. In the brief time that I have with you this evening, I wish to focus not on what divides or separates Jews and Catholics, but rather what unites us. I wish to share with you three essential theological tenets of Catholicism that have their origin in Jewish theology and without which there is no Catholic faith. The first, covenant. The Jewish scriptures speak clearly that the life of the people was built on an interpersonal relationship with God. It is a loving relationship. God loves his chosen people and his people respond with love of God. This is stated most beautifully in the Shema, Deuteronomy 6.5, which we have prayed this evening. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. And with all your strength. This relationship is deeply personal and deeply loving. This relationship is understood by the word covenant, a bond of love that unites God and his people. A covenant is always a a divine initiative and a human response. God gives his people a gift, like the promised land. And the people respond with their love by keeping the commandments of the Lord. And even when the people fail in their commitment, the Lord remains faithful to his. This covenant is the people of Israel being God's chosen people remains in force to this day for God remains ever faithful to his pledge of love. For us Catholics, we hold that the covenant that God made with his people has found its fulfillment, not its completion, but its fulfillment in the person of Jesus the Christ. This bond of love is not a place like the Garden of Eden or the Promised Land, but a person We believe that God is lovingly bonded to his people in the sacraments of the church, which Christ left for our salvation. Without the Jewish covenant, there is no Catholic faith. Second ritual. The Jewish people of faith express their innermost feelings of this bond of love with God with what they considered the highest expression, liturgical rituals. In these rituals, the people of God meet in prayer. Each ritual has its own blessed encounter with God, and each ritual achieves its effects. 
in the Jewish scriptures, there are many beautiful liturgical rituals. The Catholic Church is a church of ritual. We believe that in each of the seven sacraments of the church, Christ himself is present to his people to achieve the particular grace bestowed through the sacraments liturgy. The sacramental rituals of the Catholic Church find their origin in the Jewish liturgical rituals. Our Christian ritual of baptism by which a person is reborn into the Christian family, has its genesis in the Jewish ablution rituals found in the book of Numbers. Our Catholic ritual of reconciliation, by which a person is freed of his or her sins, has its genesis in the penitential rituals found in the book of Jonah. Second Chronicles, Ezra, 1 Samuel, and of course, Leviticus. Our Catholic ritual of the Eucharist, the Mass, by which we enter into the very death and resurrection of Christ and receive this salvific act in the food of the Eucharistic meal has its genesis in the blood of and meal rituals of the Jewish scriptures, most prominently in the Passover meal. If you ever attend a Catholic Mass, you will recognize easily our Jewish roots. Our Mass is divided into two parts, the Liturgy of the Word and the Liturgy of the Eucharist. Our Liturgy of the Word is taken from the Shabbat service, what we celebrate here this evening. And our liturgy of the Eucharist is taken from the temple worship, which was part of Jewish liturgical life until the destruction of the temple of Jerusalem in 70 AD, and draping our entire mass, our elements taken from the great Passover liturgy. Without Jewish ritual, there is no Catholic faith. Third, the memorial. Jewish theology teaches us that salvation history is the framework of all prayer. God is the God of all history, and all history is made present in God. Hence, wherever God is, so is all of history. This sense of historical transcendence over history passes into people's worship as the great salvific acts of God in the past become actual in the midst of celebrating community worship when they gather in prayer. See, this is the original definition of the word remember. To remember is not to think about a past event, but rather it is a remembering, a bringing back into the community from the past what is being prayerfully recalled. This understanding of a memorial is central to the Catholic Church's teaching on the presence of Christ in the sacraments of his church. When we celebrate our faith as Catholics, it is not just a casual reflection on what Jesus did 2,000 years ago, but rather it is the Lord himself, represented in our midst in the grace of the sacrament. For this reason, the Catholic Church believes in the real 
and abiding presence of Christ in the Eucharistic meal. Not just a symbolic presence that is held by most Protestant Christian churches. You see, without the Jewish memorial, there is no Catholic faith. My dear brothers and sisters in God, we are united. We are on a common journey. You Jews are awaiting the coming of the Messiah. We we Christians are awaiting his return in glory. Both of us are a people of waiting, not a passive waiting where we lay back and do nothing, but an active waiting where we are living lives of fervent faith in anticipation of the blessed presence of God in his glory in our human history. As a Christian, my faith teaches me that I must be ready to meet the Lord when he comes, either at my death or at his return in glory. And I will be ready only if I am living well my Catholic faith. Your faith teaches you the very same thing. You must be living well your Jewish faith in preparation for the coming of the Messiah. And so this evening, I humbly beg you, live well your Jewish faith. Because the more firmly you live your faith, the greater witness you are, not only to the Jewish community, but also to your younger siblings in the faith, the Christian community. And the more richly and more fully we can live together our common faith in the one true God, the greater witness we will be to the world around us, a world which hungers for the presence of God. God bless you all.